Uh, we got our man um, Morgan here again. Um, from as you guys, if you were here last week, you saw him. Uh, we're actually going to be talking about a bit of a more technical topic today. How to swap a motherboard. How many of you know how to do that? Oh, Essen says yes. Well, that's awesome. Not very many people do, so congrats. Um, but we're going to talk about that today. And our man Morgan over here is going to walk us through it. This is an important topic for everybody who owns a free jet. Um, at some point, hopefully not anytime soon, you may or may, may not have to go through this. But if you do, we are going to have a piece of content here that you guys will be able to reference back to help walk you through that, um, in addition to working with our tech team um, to do that as well. Because it, it can be touchy when you're playing with motherboards, motherboards and electrical and whatnot. You don't want to fry that unit up uh, if, we can, if we can at all avoid it. So um, I'm going to be here in the background. By the way, I'm loving some of your backgrounds today. Um, SMS, see that direct reader dual. I love like the purple hue coming off the bottom of it. it looks looks pretty badass. And then there was somebody else too that that had one. I don't know where he where he went. Uh, we're gonna jump right in. Uh, Morgan, lead us through. All right. Well, welcome guys to our creators live today. Uh, like Ryan was explaining, we're gonna go ahead and uh, perform a free jet uh, board uh, replacement. So. Um, well, pretty much uh, what we're going to be doing, it's, uh, well, first things first, um, as you know, you will need to contact our technical uh, support line so we can go ahead and proceed to uh, diagnose a printer to see if that is a problem. Then in case that this is a problem, this is what we're going to be doing today. All right. So um, always remember, uh, before you start working on your printer, you got to make sure that the printer is completely turned off. So you're going to do that by turning the switch off, the one located right here on the back of the printer. And just to be on the safe side, you might want to also unplug the power plug. This is what I do all the time, just to be completely safe. All right, so the next thing, what I what you would like to do is you would like to remove this part, just because, you know, if we remove the lid for the gantry, we're going to have, you know, like a full access. So we're not going to have to go, you know, like around. And this is going to save, you know, uh, a lot of time and it's going to make your job easier. So I'm um, going to go ahead and proceed to remove the first middle two screws. Don't forget a magnetic uh, tray. It's pretty uh, handy when you're working on the, with this type of uh, equipment. And a magnetic screwdriver is also super handy. In case that you drop a screw like I just did, you just pick it up and drop it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the next screw. Remember the one, the screws in the middle part on the, or on the inside. Then you kind of want to lose this one, but don't remove it just yet. I'm going to move on to this other one. I'm going to hold the gantry like this firmly. That loose. Then you proceed to remove the last screw. Then you'll get this lid off. Next thing that you want to do, it's um, remove the panel from, you know, from the rear part of the gantry. Uh, again, uh, every time that you need to move this gantry by hand, you don't want to push it from a side or this other side. You always want to push it and pull it from the center part. In this case, you can slightly push it and make sure that your table gets properly lowered so you don't hit the gantry with it. Push it down just that much. Then you're gonna go ahead and remove, actually you're gonna pull these pin heads out. We can remove this part. You will need a number two Phillips head screwdriver. So then the next thing that you're gonna remove is this in chip reset by removing these two screws on the top. Ink chip reset comes out. You can always, you know, drop it in here. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed to remove this L-shaped bracket that holds the ink tubes by removing these two screws, number one, number two. Now it is very important to make sure that you pay attention to the screws that you remove. As you, as you notice, uh, these screws 
are the ones that hold the lead. These other screws right here are the ones holding the ink chip reset. Now, this other screw, as you notice, it has like a, it has a washer, it's loose. So this one belongs to this L-shaped bracket. So you might wanna mark them or put them sep place them separately so you'll know that when you're ready to put them back, you know where they go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this other one. Now notice that here is a ground cable, so keep this on mind, all right? Now we have the L-shaped bracket that holds the ink tubes loose. The next step is removing this cover. We, get, we have two screws right here on the left, two screws on the right. We're gonna go ahead and proceed to remove them. Like I just mentioned, always pay attention to the screws to make sure that you put them back on the right place. So this one, it's a little bit shorter. It has some sort of a, some type of a building washer. It's not loose like, uh, like the one that we remove up from up here. See, this washer is loose, this one's not. So always put the screws, the right screws back to the right place. So I'm gonna remove that one right there. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed the other one. Be extremely careful when you're pulling these screws out because if this screw falls inside of the printer, you're gonna be short one screw and you're not gonna be able to put everything back together. So take your time and be extra careful when you're removing these screws. Any screw action. There you go. That's for last one. Same thing with your tools. Got to make sure. I mean, like this one is big enough so it doesn't fit right here to the to the side. But if your screwdriver is slimmer than this, I always put it in a set, you know in a different table because you don't want it to fall inside of the printer. Got that done. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull this cover. Now when you do this, you got to be extremely careful because remember you have your lines. When you're when you're doing this job on a uh, FJ and a free jet 330 TX, you're not gonna have these bulbs. But you still wanna be careful because I mean, these tubes are strong, but you might end up damaging them. So be very careful. Now that we're dealing with a 330TX plus, we have these tubes and they are, you know, connected by pressure. So that's when you gotta be super extra careful not to move this, you know, ink line too much. So lightly lift it. See, I'm just, you know, barely lifting it, maybe about an inch away from the plate. Pull this plate out. Also be careful with this chip right here. Turn it down here. Notice that you have your, your LED chip here and it has a cable. So be very careful when you're, when you're removing this plate. So lift it. And very gently, you're gonna pull this plate out. Now we have exposed or frigid board. Remember this uh, ground cable? So you bend it like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and proceed to um, pull the cables and the ribbon cables from this board. Always before pulling the ribbon cables, you wanna go ahead and grab them or pinch them really close to the connector. Not the white plastic connector, but the actual cable. And when you pull this cable up, you don't want to pull it like sideways because if you do that, you're going to end up damaging the silver connectors, which I'm going to, which I'm going to be showing out to you in a second. So the best and the proper way to pull this cable is again, grab it close to the plastic connector on the board and then just pull it right up, straight up. Now, I just mentioned, if you pull this cable sideways, this little metal, bars will get damaged. You will need to replace this cable, but if you pull it and you don't pay attention and you end up damaging one of these bars and then you put it, you know, by the time that you put everything back together, you plug this cable back in position without knowing that one of those bars got damaged, then 
As the second that you turn this printer on, you're going to end up burning either this board or something else within the printer. So be extra careful. All right. So what I like to do in this, in this case, which is the R2400C and two cable, I like to loop it in the camera around this motor, which is the X motor, by the way. And then kind of bring it from the, bring it out from the, from this opening on the side of the gantry. Okay. And I just give it hanging right there. So it's not going to be, you know, like dancing around with the rest of the cables. Uh, next thing that you want to go ahead and pull is a 31 pin. 31 pin, it's like super snug. So same thing. This is a ribbon cable. Remember, you must pull this cable straight up, not to the side. So you want to kind of reach in your thumbs behind the cable, your index finger right in front of the cable, grab it really close from the uh, plastic uh, connector and pull it right up. You kind of want to go ahead and, you know, like use your other finger to apply pressure to the board so it doesn't lift. Maybe this other one and then pop it right up. Now, every time that you pull one of these ribbon cables, always check your bars, your metal bars or silver bars. And what we're looking for pretty much here is to have it like this. If you notice, I mean, like, can you, do we have a clear picture of the cable? Mm -hmm. All right, so this cable, it's in excellent shape. Now, if you notice that any of these ribbon cables have some sort of a greenish thing, like corrosion, like, I don't know, I mean, something that you can picture on this, like, I don't know if you notice, like in your battery car, on the positive, sometimes, you know, you get like corrosion, like green stuff, you know, building up. So something similar. If you notice that something like that is, you know, growing on your cable, well, you will need to definitely replace the cable because you don't want to plug this cable back into your new board. Even though if you try to clean it, we strongly not recommend you to plug it back. Why? Because you might clean it from the outside, but the corrosion is actually building in the inside of the cable then that will cause, you know, either, you know, you might not end up frying the board, but on time that corrosion will continue to grow and then you're going to be in trouble because then you're going to end up blowing the board or something else in the printer like I just mentioned. Again, this applies to any ribbon cable. Like this, like the one that we just pulled, the very first one that we just pulled and so on. So now, same thing. This cable I like to run it behind the X motor so it's not going to be in the way. Next thing, since I'm already here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this other cable, which is the free jet board cable. Now, to pull these ones, you can grab them by the wire. Try not to grab it from the actual connector, but it's going to, it's going to be kind of hard for you to pull it. So grab it from the wires, wiggle it, and at the same time that you're wiggling up, you pull it up. That's loose. Now we're going to go ahead and proceed to remove the sensor height cable. Same thing, grab it from the wires, wiggle it, and at the same time, pull the cable up. And proceed to remove these other ones. Circulation pump cable. Up. Pump cable. Wiggle it. Up. X motor. Wiggle it. Up. I believe this is CN12. Wiggle it up. This other one, wiggle it, pull it up. This one, wiggle it. And up. There it is. So when you're pulling these cables up, always, you know, like you might want to place your hand right here. So you or you're only pulling from this connector. Because if you grab it like this and then you pull it up, since you know the very first time that you're gonna be doing this you will feel that this is pretty snug. And if you grab it just like that and then pull it up, you might end up pulling it from the board in the bottom. So that's why try to place your hand here so you can have some support and then you just apply the pulling on this board. Those right. cables out of the way. Now, going back to this ink belt, gently move it away. Remember, be careful with your ink tubes. And now we're gonna go ahead and proceed to remove these other ribbon cables again. Place your index figure in the back, thumb, grab it really close to the plastic connector on the board and pull it up. Inspect your cable. Up, 
inspect your cable. Another way that you can also inspect this cable to prevent any, you know, actually to make sure that it's not damaged, it's like placing your finger on top of the edge and just pass it on, you know, like sideways, like that. So if one of if one of these silver bars is like getting loose or is spilling down by passing the finger like this, you should be able to notice right away if it's spilling down, then you're gonna have to replace the cable, all right? In this case, all of these cables are in good shape. I'll go ahead and remove the C and five. E and I. See, this one is pretty snug, so go ahead and apply pressure. Press the board down while you're pulling the cable up. There it pops up. Now, with all the cables being unplugged, kind of want them pull them out so they won't be on the way. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed to remove the screw. So might be the first screw that you want to go ahead and unscrew. This one is holding the ground cable. In most of our printers, this is attached to this screw, right? So go ahead and do that. Hang on to the cable, put it in a safe place. Then the next screw that we want to remove is the one over here. Now notice that right here, this connects to the board, but it also has this ground cable which goes underneath the screw. So, now this gray cable, what I like to do is to run it behind this hook. So it's not dancing on top of my area where I'm gonna be working at and also it's gonna be visible for me. So I don't forget to plug it back. So just throw it right there. Move your ink tubes. And now this is the third screw that you're gonna remove. Okay, now our pre-jet board, oh my bad. There's one more cable that we need to remove, which is this one over here. This is a power cable, and this is a very important cable. You gotta be extremely careful when you remove it, all right? So this one, we not, we're not gonna pull like the other ones. If you notice, can you zoom or? Mm -hmm. You notice it has like this little slim slack, I mean, uh, latch. So with your fingernail, you know, kind of want to tack it on the side, Pull the latch up. Then you're going to go to the other side. Using your fingernail, same thing, you're going to pull the latch up. That, see how it popped up? Now, since I don't have the screws holding the board, I don't want to apply pressure. Hold it really, you know, really tight. And then I'm going to grab the cable firmly with your thumb and index. Yeah, pull it up. Now, the reason that you want to be super careful with this cable also is because, as you can see, these are bare wires. Now, these wires are not a solid piece of wire. They're like uh, they're like threaded. So, if you hit the tip of one of these wires, it will spread, and then it's gonna be super hard for you to put it back in there. All right. So, with that being said. I'm gonna go ahead and push this cable down so it's not in the way. And then you can go ahead and proceed to remove or pull your free jet board. So you're, you're gonna grab it from the back, lift it a little bit, and then very carefully, you're gonna slide it towards the back of the printer. Yes, this is your free jet board. So put this away. And before bringing your new free jet board, you also, wanna you know like spend at least a minute or two to make sure that the cables down here are properly plugged because as you notice we were unplugging the ones on the top so sometimes we might end up over pulling one of the cables like this one which is the cn9 or the cn5 and they will probably get unplugged from this board which is in the bottom so we always want to go back here 
make sure that these cables are properly deep in the connector before installing your new board. So cable number one that you want to check is the CN5. So you don't have to pull it out, just hold it close to the connector and then just press it down. See, like this one, I've noticed that right now that I pushed it down, it actually went in, so it was slightly out. So this is why you want to go ahead and spend those couple of minutes to make sure that your cables are properly inserted. Move this out of the way. Let me check the next one. We'll do the same thing. Push it down. I'm going to move to the next one. Push it down. Then the CN12. Down. Then the CN10. Down. CN9. Down. Then CN14. And as you notice right here, um, each cable, it's labeled. So let's say in the, you know, like the future, if you ever need to replace AB cables, all the cables are labeled it. So like CN14, CN11, CN12, CN13, CN10, and the board in the bottom, it also has the same number. So this way, I mean, you can just check the label in the cable and match it to the connector on the board. Same thing applies to the frigid board. I'm going to go ahead and check the CM14, which, which we already did. Now, spool our cables towards the back. Now we're going to check the paper fit motor, the paper gun motor. Let's make sure that it's all the way in. So motor, push it down. This other one, just give it a little press or push. The other one, same thing, push it down. Now notice that these cables are running around this resistor, so you kind of want to go ahead and um, kind of want to wrap this resistor so we have the proper length or slack for cables. Because if we do this, see, like the cables are going to be hanging and they're going to be way too long. That's why you want to go ahead and uh, wrap the cables around this resistor down and. There you go. Cables are nicely organized. Yeah. And just ready for you to plug them back. Pump cable, X motor. I'm going to bring it out here along with the other cables. This one we can leave it just there. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Another. Uh, Thing that I recommend is that before bringing your frigid board, it's to check these um, rods or stand up screws. These ones are holding the uh, R2400 board in position. So, as you notice, you have one, two, and three. So, what I always like to do before bringing my new board is I like to give them a light tie to those uh, stand ups. And uh, what you're going to need, it's a number, actually a five millimeter socket. You can find these ones as one I have right here with extension and then just a little socket. Or you can also find them, you know, like as a, some sort of a screwdriver type of thing. All right. So I'm going to bring it, place it on top of that rod. And you don't want to over tight it. All you have to do is just a light twist. That, now the reason you want to do this is because let's say you know if you don't pay attention and this rod it's loose you're going to bring your board you're going to tie it and then if you ever need to change that board or if you ever need to change this r2400 board when you start to unscrew the board on the top and if this rod was loose from the previous repair guess what's going to happen you're going to start unscrewing the screw but this is going to come along and then it's going to be you know it's going to be kind of hard for you to remove it you're going to need to get you know like some pliers to hold this one in order for you to be able to unscrew the top the the, the upper screw all right <laughs> all right so now that we already checked the rods to be properly tightened i'm going to go ahead and replace our frigid board so you pull your brand new frigid board we're just going to reverse the process See, we're going to bring it in like this. 
when you sit on top of those uh, stand-up rods. Now we're going to go ahead and reach. Our screws. And now, this is why it's so important for you to pay attention to your screws, mark them or put them apart to make sure that you put the right screws back in the right place. All right. I always like to do is start with this one. Now, a good way, um, I'm, I don't know if you guys know, but in case that you don't, here is a tip. This, you know, with this tip, you will never get a, uh, you will never get a strip, a screw, uh, you know, like a, a screw thread. So instead of placing the screw and immediately start tightening it, what I like to do is I like to go counterclockwise, slowly. And as soon as you feel that jump, I'm gonna do it again. So I'm going counterclockwise, so, okay. Hold that click. That means that the thread engage it with the rod. By doing this with any type of screw, you will never gonna strip a screw or a thread hole. There we go. So, what I like to do, I like to screw it all the way down. Now it's stopped. I don't wanna tight it. So, I just go counterclockwise one turn. Then I like to uh, go grab my other screw. The same thing, place it in the hole, go counterclockwise. Snapped, and then I'll go around it. I start screwing this thing in. Stop, and then go counterclockwise one turn. And then I'll reach my last screw. Basically, I'm gonna do the same exact thing, place it in the hole. Go counterclockwise. Oh, so that's a snap. Oh, so stop, and then in this one. In this case, I don't. I don't really need to go back. Now, the reason I'm leaving this is these two screws loose. Actually, all of them loose is because let's say you know since these rods are not perfectly uh, straight, and if I tie this one, then the hole right here, the the rod underneath this hole. It might be unaligned, so you're gonna tie this one. You're gonna tie this one, and then by the time that they get to this, the hole is not gonna be nicely straight with the hole. Uh, the, the rod is not gonna be nicely straight with the hole, and then you're gonna have to go back and lose the other ones, so you can go ahead and get this screw in. So that's the reason I like to leave these two kind of loose. So as soon as I see the last one, and I know that my screws are in position, now I can go ahead and start tightening things. Now, tie that one. Now we're gonna go ahead and tie this other two. Now the other reason that you wanna leave these ones loose is because of your ground cable. Don't forget. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reach in, lose it a little bit, and then bring my ground cable. Tie it underneath my screw. There we go. And another thing, you do not want to super tight these screws, just a light twist, okay? All right, so my ground cable is there. So what I like to do, I like to uh, bend it like towards the front. <clears throat> this, and I'm gonna explain you why in a minute. Now I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna go ahead and install this other gray. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move this away. Gonna loose this screw real quick. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide my other ground cable between the screw and the board. Remember, do not over tie this. All right, now that it's in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug the uh, rigid keypad connector. It's in. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tie this on. Now, next thing, actually the first cable, the first ribbon cable that you want to go ahead and connect is the 31 pin. So like I was uh, explaining uh, you know, at the beginning, these cables are very fragile. So 
Remember, every time that you pull the, you know, any ribbon cable, grab it close to the connector and firmly pull it up, straight up. And the same way you're gonna do when you bring this cable in. So you're gonna fold it and you don't wanna just go ahead and shove it in there. First, you gotta make sure that the cable is properly sitting in the slot. See in this connector, this is the slot. You gotta make sure that the cable is properly sitting in there. Because let's say if you don't pay too much attention and you bring the cable like this, see, it's not even. Now, if we push this cable sitting this way in the slot, we're gonna damage this one. And I mean, like, if that happened to us to, you know, with any of these short cables, I mean, that's an easy fix. But if you damage this one, then you're gonna be in a lot of trouble, well, not a lot of trouble, right? But you're gonna have to pretty much pull a lot of parts off from the printer in order for you to be able to replace this cable. So be very careful, again. Make sure that the cable is properly engaging the slot. There you go. Now it's gonna grab it from the center, close to the connector and the board, and now you're gonna push it down. Now this one, it's pretty snug. So make sure you push it straight down. Don't wiggle it like this. Just hold it firmly and press it down and you're gonna be able to hurt like a snap. I shouldn't hurt it, but it's in. Now a good way to make sure that this cable is properly connected. You can come this way, please. Okay, go ahead and aim the camera to the inside. So, right, so I'm moving this away. In order, I mean, if you want to go ahead and make sure that this cable went in properly, you kind of want to move this away and you want to go ahead and take a look right here where the cable and the connector meets. We're not supposed to see any, you know, like not much of the silver bars. Like in this case, we can see a very, very slight piece of that silver bar, but it's completely fine. But you also want to make sure that it's even. For example, the cable. looks like this, that's wrong, okay? So if that happens, just pull the cable up, bring it in again, push it, see? That's how you properly insert the cable. All right, now the next cable that you wanna install is the R2400, which is hanging out here. Bring it to the front. Now you gotta be very careful. This board has, you know, like extra connectors. So make sure that you plug this cable on the right spot. Like I mentioned it before, the connectors in the board, they're labeled it. So this one right here says R2880 or cable says R2400. So it doesn't go there. Right here, we see that we have the R2400 CN2. That's where this cable goes. Same way. Place it evenly in the slot and then push it in. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to these other cables. One more thing that I also want to go ahead and uh, mention is this. Go ahead and uh, do like a close up. Okay, so notice the connectors on the board. This part right here is just plastic white. Now, this other side, that's where the metal pegs are. Always want to make sure that the bars on the cable are on the peg side. Because I mean, like, otherwise, if you connect it like this, there's not going to be, you know, no connection because bars are not touching those pegs. All right. So pay attention to that. Be careful. Put the cable in there. Press it down. Even loop the thing. I'm going to go ahead and plug the CM5. Now, notice this one has a blue face, which means that the bars and the connector are attached. Now this one, it has the blue face facing the front. That means, and, and it's because the pegs are on the opposite side of the connector than this other one. So that's why this cable is going like that. Well, it's in. We're gonna go ahead and reach and look for our HCN9. Actually, we'll find the HCN5. 
Same thing. Well, let's do the HCN9, which is here. Place it. Push. Now we're gonna go ahead and proceed. I'm gonna come around. Go ahead and proceed to connect these other wires. So what I always like to do, I like to start plugging this one, you know, the X motor. And this page. It's black like now in regards to these cables, there's no way that you're gonna be uh plugging them, you know incorrectly because as you can see they have you know like different shapes and they're also color coded so beige beige white white black black shape there you go. i'd like to plug this other one now here another thing that i want to i want to bring up notice this uh connector it goes here with a status Right here, it's a state as a status, it's labeled as a status. But this other plug right here, it's exactly the same size as this one. But this one, it says main com. Be careful because if you accidentally plug this cable onto this other port, you might end up burning something. So always make sure that the that the connect this connector goes onto the status email connector on the port. So what I like to do is I like to uh, run this. Things have to be plugged in circular. Okay, um, the uh, hole. So do the cables have to be plugged in certain order? Not really. I mean, it depends on you know, like you know, the position that you are. The only one that I will say that yeah, it has to be plugged on uh, on certain order is the R twenty one. R31, uh, actually the 31 pin, sorry. And the reason why you wanna plug this one first before plugging this other one is because if you plug this one in first, then you're not gonna have enough room to get this one in. And you might end up damaging either this power connect, this power cable or the 31 pin. So in a way, yes, this will be the first one that you wanna connect or the, one, the first one you wanna plug. All right, so going back to this other one. So as you can see, I like to run this status cable underneath these ones, plug it. Then this other one, there. Now the reason I like to um, do it this way. Oh, it's not just like that. It's because this cable, the one that I just plugged, which is the four uh, pin, it kind of wraps the other cables and they're not hanging and they don't look, you know, like messy or anything like that. Now, I'm gonna run the pump cable behind the cables for the same exact reason. So it won't be hanging over here. And it's gonna, I mean, your, your, your work is gonna look like nice or more, much organized and you're not gonna be pinching cables or anything like that. Now, <clears throat> this is the pump cable. Notice it's gray. I remember I say that these connectors are color coded. In this one in particular, connector is white, female connector on the board is black. Now, you have the label right there, which says pump. So I always remember, gray cable with the blue side, it goes into the pump. Like I was just saying, they have, they, ha they, they are shaped, uh, they are shape coded. So if you try to push this cable, wrong it's just not gonna go in so you gotta do just turn it around what i also like to do is i like to tug this cable really really nice and see how nice and neat look it looks now the last cable actually not the last one but the next one is going to be the sensor cable color coded red see when you're pushing this kind of bend so you might want to place your finger underneath here so it doesn't bend and then you, you won't damage, you know, what this part of the board. Yeah. We're getting any questions ready. Uh, good morning, Norman Prim from Daytona. Welcome, Picard. KT well, love it. There we go. All right. So last cable that you want to go ahead and plug is this one, the power cable. And now this is why 
I like to plug this one first. So bring this one in, you kind of push this one down. Now, before bringing this cable in, you got to make sure again that these wires, these bare wires are nicely straight. If there are, you know, like, let's say, let's, let's spend one, let's say, got the cables like that. See what happened? All right, so this might end up happening to you, you know, like, just that's why you got to be extra careful. What you want to do, you might want to grab one of these tools right here. So you can straight the cable up. So see, put it between these bare wires, pulling it, avoid touching the tip. Because remember, this is a threaded wire, and you don't want to spread the tip. You go. Now it's straight. And you can also want to go ahead and grab it with your fingers like this. Thank you. Well, and now it's nicely straight. All right. Now, before bringing this cable in, remember the latch. Make sure you pop the latch. Actually, let's go ahead and pull it like this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. See how it came out? Um, I'm going to grab a cable. You kind of want to bend it like this. And you want to want to come, you know, like in the full top to bottom view. And you got to make sure that each bare wire goes into the design or assignment hole. Make sure that you bring those wires into the design hole. So it's in. Without letting go with your other finger, you're going to go ahead and press the latch down. To make sure that it locks, boom, well, that's it. Just to be on the safe side. Come from the side and make sure that this cable, the black cable is completely catching the white female connector on the board. If you kind of see bare wires over here and this part completely attached to the white connector, that's wrong, gonna have to unlatch it push it down or maybe, you know, pull it out, make sure that the, that the bare wires are, you know, like nice and slit and then bring it back in. And it has to look just like this, All right? Okay, so before we put in everything, before we put everything back together, you wanna go ahead and double check your work. So you got your 31 pin, you got R2400, power cable, control, ground, sensor, status, pump, X motor, these three over here. Remember your tubes, be gentle with them. HCN5, CN5 behind HCN5, HCN9, and behind HCN9 we have the CN9. We got our ground cable, and we're ready to go. Now, We're gonna grab our plate, and this is how you want to bring it in. See this shape right here, by the way. All right, so this is how you want to bring this plate. So this is a whole rectangular plate right here. You have the opening. I'm gonna bring this in. Lift your ink belt. Bring the slim part in first. Be careful. So, and then push it and get it nice and straight. You can rest it there. Now, let's go back to our screws. Again, mark your screws, place them separately, take pictures, whatever, you know, whatever uh, you feel more comfortable doing. But always place the right screws in the right places. So in this case, this is the one that we're going to be working on. Short one, silver, with a building washer. So. All right, so hole. It's a good idea to put a light cover over the machine to help it with dust from getting into the machine. Absolutely. Not when the machine is, you know, working. But, you know, at the end of the day, after you perform your um, proper shutdown procedure, 
Yes, definitely. You can go ahead and uh, place, you know, like a cover, maybe, you know, like like a blanket, a piece of blanket or something like that on top. Make sure that you cover also the ink bottles. Go ahead and uh, get closer, uh, James, please. Make sure you cover the bottles because as you notice, these little bottles, I mean, the caps, they have a hole. So if your environment is kind of dusty, guess what? Dust is going to go through this hole. Then your ink mix with it. It's going to be drawn to the uh, spring head and that will begin to plug your uh, damper, all right? So yes, it is a good idea. But remember, make sure you recover while it's working, just overnight or when it's not in use, all right? So pretty much it, okay? Let's get back to install this. So what you wanna do here, there's your screw. This is kind of a tricky part. So I wanna go ahead and grab it like this, see what's going on. This part right here, and I'm glad that this happened. So if I place this tab on top of this, you know, female connectors, and I try to uh, bring this plate out on top, see, it doesn't fit. So what I like to do, I like to bring this cover on top of these female pegs or female connect receivers, and then bring this over. Now, if you want to go ahead and name there. Now, my hole is aligned. There. Make sure you didn't drink, you didn't drink uh, coffee before doing this, otherwise your hands are gonna be a little bit shaky, like mine. Oh. Okay, let's try. Let's try it again. No, that's going in. No, don't forget about your ground cable. Make sure that the ground cable is hanging to, towards the front. And that's why I like to do this because sometimes it happens that you forget about this cable. You place this cover and the cables, you know, got stuck in there. And guess what? You're going to have to remove the whole thing in order for you to be able to bring this cable out. So make sure you keep an eye on this one and make sure that it's hanging towards the front. All right, so now I have that screw in. I'll go ahead and uh, get the other one in on the same side. So that's that. Now let's work on this other side. Now right here, what you want to do is you kind of want to pull this side out a little bit so the cover can easily slide on top of these screw holes. There we go. Remember, always make sure that you put the right screws back in the right place. So don't tie them, leave them loose. Even the first ones, leave them slightly loose. And now that we have all four screws in, now you can go ahead and start screwing things up. So before screwing these things, notice that this plate slides front to back. So make sure you push it to the front. Don't hide your screw. Don't over tighten them. Remember, you don't want us, you don't want to strip the hole or the screw screw head. There we go. Now we're gonna move on to this other side. I'm gonna go ahead and push. Actually, you don't really need to push this one much because we need to uh, push this cable in once we already installed it. So leave it like that. Hold your plate. Go. Tight. 
move on to the last row, do the same thing. Now, this is another reason why you want a long throw driver so you don't have to be dealing, you know, with a short one. You kind of want to, you know, be comfortable working on, you know, on top of your machine. So, that. now we're going to go ahead and secure over ink belt bracket. I'm going to go ahead and bring this screw in first. All right, we have another question. Do you guys recommend getting all these parts directly from Omniprint or sourcing them from other Epson printers or third party parts? No, absolutely. Go ahead and reach us uh, whenever you need parts because we have the genuine parts that it will definitely going to be working with your printer. So you don't want to put your, put your uh, printer at risk by adding, you know, unknown parts or non-authorized uh, parts. Okay, another one. Um, I always get my part, there you go. Yeah, Trodian, way to go, thank you. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and bring your other screw. Um, see? And, you, I, and I don't know if you noticed, but I always like to leave all my screws loose. As soon as I'm finished, you know, screwing the last one, then I, well, that's when I start to screw things in or tie things in. So there we go. Tie this guy. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the ground cable. Make sure that you run the ground cable underneath the ink belt. Light it underneath that screw right there. Hold it. And see, it's not like that. It's not, it's not supposed to be straight like that. You kind of want to have like on an angle like this. Tight your screw. Remember, do not over tight, just firmly tight. Set. Now, you want to go ahead and push this cable into this crack. You use a swap, some the slimmer just to push it in so it won't be in the bell way. All right, cool. So we got that done. Let's check our work. We already have these two screws on this side tightened. These other two also. This one's holding the ink like bracket. They are also, you know, tightened. Now let's go ahead and uh, place our pen cover in the back. Always make sure that you pull the pin heads out. There you go. And I think I have uh, another question right here. It only makes sense. How many print nose are printers? There you go. Yes. We do it, Trident. Thank you. All right, so uh, make sure that this pan, the bends are aiming down. So I'm going to go ahead and align those pins onto the holes or into the holes. Hold it like this, snap it in, and then push the pin heads in to secure the pan. You're set. Now the lid. So what you want to do with the lid is this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it like this from the center. And this is another reason why you wanna place the cover back first so you can rest the lid on that cover. And you bring your screen, that one first. Screwdriver, then bring the lid up, aim to the hole, it's in, remember, don't tie these screws, leave them loose. Keep holding the leaf. Bring your screw back to that hole right there. Lift your leaf. Place your screwdriver. There you go. Remember, leave the screws a little bit loose. And then you can go ahead and proceed to install the last two screws. So, right there I was, okay, remember that little uh, counterclockwise crick that I mentioned earlier? There you go. And now that you have all four screws, Make sure that you that you place your hand back here so you can support, or actually so you can apply support. Your lid, boom, that's good enough. Tighten the other screw, boom. Then the screw on the outside part. 
go back to the last one. And now the last part. Forget about your ink chip reset, that it's in here. Out. Notice it has this little squarish boards. Make sure that they're round black dot, it's on the top. Meaning like it doesn't go like that. It goes like this. So it's on top. It will reach through. The counterclockwise trick. Get the other one in. There you go. You're tightening this one, so you kind of want to bring your finger underneath the, the cover and just, you know, add a little bit of support. That's it. Don't over tighten, just firmly tighten. That's it. You're going to put your rail on the side. Close your lid. Remove all your tools from the table. Go ahead and plug all the cable. Turn on the switch. Make sure that there's no tools back here, right? Make sure that there's nothing because as soon as you know, as soon as uh, I turn on the switch, this gander is going to move to home position. Boom. Oops. Now notice something. If this gantry, by the time they turn on the switch, it doesn't move to, you know, it doesn't, you know, like goes back to the home position, then there's something wrong. Meaning that either the board was defective or one of the cables is not properly connected. So now, this one moved the way it's supposed to, it was supposed to now, and then uh, come over here. I can go ahead and proceed to turn on your printer. Another thing that you want to also sit. What happened? Are we done? Okay, just, just, just real quick. Here we turn on the printer all the way on. And it should look just like this. No error, no ink. Printer just starts up the way it's supposed to. Let's see, do we have any questions? Awesome, guys. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. I, let me just be the first one to say I am so grateful to have people like you, Morgan, working for Omniprint, man. Uh, just your, your technical skill set around the stuff is incredible, and it's impressive uh, to say the least to watch you do that. And you, you know the printer like the back of your hand, man, and that's just – it's amazing. So thank you for taking the time to walk us all through that um, and to go deep into that and explain it well. Really, really, really appreciate that. Um, thank you very much. I'm really glad to hear this, and uh, I'm here for you guys. Um, let's go ahead and some questions from, from Dallas here. Yeah, go ahead, Dallas. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? Good. Hey, so I have a, another printing question. So if somebody else has anything that they want to ask that's related to the subject of today, I don't mind waiting. I don't want to take up somebody's time that are on topic since mine's a bit off topic. Oh, man, I, don't, I, think you're, I think you're probably good. Just go and shoot. Okay. Um, the question I have is, I noticed this week I was printing all black ink. So just like a text design on like a darker, a medium to dark gray shirt. So no underbase or anything, just black ink. And I noticed that it's fading really bad in the wash. Even one cycle of wash, the black is fading really bad. So I tried some other stuff. I did a double layer of black. I tried to get it to force the underbase white under it, which I didn't really want to do because I don't really want to use white under a black ink, which I, you know, I don't think you should need to. Um, as far as I can screen printing stuff goes too. So I'm just curious if anybody has any tips or if there's like a setting or something maybe that I'm missing in the RIP software that I'm not getting the exact or correct black ink down on a shirt when that's the only color that I'm printing. Cause that's the only color I'm having issue with. 
the blacks that I'm, I'm doing within designs that are then underbased and then the black is printed, those look fine coming out of the wash. It's literally just if it's only black on, on a shirt that it's, it seems to fade after about the first wash. Okay, when it comes to that, I mean, uh, I want to say that it probably has to do with the uh, pre-treatment part. Because um, you, you might want to go ahead and uh, check the type of pre-treatment that you're using, the uh, type of fabric that you're uh, printing on, might be 50-50, might be 70-30 uh, or all cotton. Um, check those ones out. If it's, let's say, you know, higher percentage on polyester and lower in cotton, you might want to go ahead and use the, uh, the other type of pre-treatment, which is the uh, gamut. Now, um, another thing, you know, the amount of pretreatment that you're using, the way that, uh, that you are, you know, like pretty much drying that pretreatment, that, you know, those are little, you know, like sort of facts that, you know, like it kind of, you know, like throw you into that situation. And okay, yeah, uh, we I'm are- using, yeah. I'm using a 60-40 poly blend with uh, dark poly pretreat. And then I had had a question last week because I was going way too heavy on the pretreat. So I knocked that back this week and was getting much better prints all around, not just with um, just this one. And the other stuff's looking really good uh, as far as like the pretreat goes and, and the amount of time on the press and stuff. But for some reason, it's the, you know, the, just the black ink when it's just black by itself, it's just, it's completely washing out almost. And it doesn't even look like it's washing out. Like it's like, it's not specking or flecking, you know, flaking or anything like that. It, it just goes from being vibrant black to just faded, faded, faded with every wash. It's getting even worse. Mm -hmm. Have you ever considered uh, to use a conveyor machine? Yeah, I don't have that big of an operation yet. We're not a full on printing shop. We do this actually as a, a smaller side business to a, a current business we have. So we're, we're not doing it to that extent yet. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just to share with you this information, I mean, we have a small conveyor uh, machines that you might want to look, look into it. That right there might give you, you know, might, might solve your problem. Uh, now, if you want to continue using the heat press, uh, when, you know, when you're curing your, um, your print, what you might want to do, it's uh, you might want to go ahead and check your temperature, check the pressure on the, uh, you know, on the um, heat press. Uh, try not to apply too much, uh, you know, pressure onto your garment. Do a little bit lighter. And, you know, like, it's just a thing, you, you know, to go back and forth and do different type of tests until you hit that spot. Okay. Yeah, Dallas, how many, how many shirts are you doing a day? Um, we're, so, like I said, we're not, we're not even printing every day. I probably get on the machines every couple of days because most of the okay. stuff that we're actually making is just internal stuff, giveaway type stuff for uh, um, the other business that we own. So, we're, like I said, we're not even in this full-blown as a, as a printing operation. This is just kind of a side piece to other business we have nice cool well try those things and then if you you're still having issues um jump back on here next week we'll be here again next week and um if we need to we could also loop in our chemist um edgar uh he's usually pretty active and working with people who have these types of issues as well um and obviously you know are you using gamut inks or which are you using dark inks what was that are you using gamut inks or direct inks I'm using uh, the stuff straight from you guys. Okay. Yeah. Even, I mean, even better. We can, we can help solve that. I mean, we know we, we literally formulate, formulate them in, in the, in the lab. So um, okay. I could also let, just send an email into support at, um, and then uh, with your batch number on the black bottle that you're using. Okay. And we'll go ahead and, and we'll go ahead and look at that and, and get it solved for you in case it is it's not 9.9 .9 times out of 10. It's not a batch issue. But yeah. we always like to have that data just in case. For sure. Um, and it's still within then, the expiration too. It hasn't expired yet or anything like that. So it's, yeah. still, I mean, it's still good ink. So yeah. Yeah. Fire, fire us over an email. Let us look into it with you. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, of course. All right, guys. Look, we're over 12 minutes here. We're going to go ahead and cut the session. But, um, you know, this, this session will be live again on YouTube in a couple of weeks after uh, we, we post produce and end it down. Um, just as a general FYI, we have relaunched all of the creators' lives onto YouTube for a limited time. We are working on the Omni Academy. It's taking a little bit because um, we, you know, we literally custom designed and built that, that platform from the ground up. So if you want any of these past videos, go ahead and please do go to our YouTube channel and you guys will see the playlist there and you can get everything from the past that we've done. So um, it will only be there for a couple of weeks until we finish up the new platform. Um, and you guys can get access to it.
Uh, from uh, last thing here that I want to mention. Um, by the way, yeah, Mauricio put the playlist link in the chat, so you can you can get it there um, as well during during the speeding. And otherwise, we'll see you next week. Sound good? All right, see you guys. Have a good week.